I can see this where I am, but <coughs> we wanted to, uh, decided to announce today and show you guys some renderings um, of some next phase of investments that we're going to be making here in, in Flowery Branch. This continues what we've been doing for the last uh, few years up here, but um, we'll go through it and see what questions you guys have. But uh, the first part is building a new strength and conditioning room. And so this is going to be over, I think it's on the south side, over where our, our player's parking lot is. So uh, a two-story new uh, building over there. <coughs> it's going to be more than double the size of the current strength and conditioning room that we have now. Uh, so we're excited about that. We've been studying um, that and the locker room um, that we'll also talk about uh, going back uh, at least to last summer. <coughs> and so uh, Spencer Treadwell, our VP of Ops, and a lot of our other football guys have been visiting a lot of facilities um, over the last couple of years, getting ideas and things. And so um, we're excited about that. And then once we, we're going to start that, um, actually try to do some groundbreaking uh, as soon as um, uh, mandatory minicamp is over. So um, maybe as early as Friday gets get started on that so we can get a good run before everybody gets back in here for training camp and get some things started there. Uh, and hopefully get, get all that done before training camp next year. Um, once we accomplish that and move all of our equipment into there, we're going to have the extra space that's now our strength and conditioning room and use that to expand our locker room. And so completely redo that. Locker room will be more than doubled, um, have a lot more uh, lockers. We'll have up to 90 locker, permanent lockers in there, which uh, now we don't have uh, enough during camp for everybody there, just given the the growth um, that we've seen over the last few years and uh, practice squad guys and, you know, with the shorter term on IR possible now, we have more guys that are here working out versus being done for the, for the year. Um, so these are some concept plans that we're working through. Uh, that'll be started as soon, as I said, uh, as soon as we finish the strength and conditioning room. And then we're hoping we can get that done uh, early in the 2024 season. And then related, um, uh, you guys have probably seen just on the other side of this door, as part of the construction design of this building, we, we did expand our dining room uh, capabilities uh, last year. So that was something we've been working on for more than a year in the construction of, of this room, uh, this building <coughs> studio. Um, we will be doing some back of the house things also in our, our dining area to increase our cooking capacity and just exciting things like storage and things like that, but things that we need uh, for just the growth that we've got up here. So that's the overview. All right, one note just for all the questions too, we'll try and get things out about the new frame rooms too. Uh, everyone wants to ask questions for Greg. Um, I guess we'll, we'll take, Greg, we'll take what you guys decide that this is necessary. Um, well, there's, there's different phases of it, Michael. So uh, the, the dining room, as I mentioned, we've been looking at when we started designing this, Spence probably two years ago, uh, the dining room expansion was part of it. We knew we wanted to make that bigger. So um, that started probably a couple years ago. And then uh, I would say really in earnest last summer is when we knew we wanted to do these other two projects. Um, you know, our, this building was built in uh, this campus in 2000. And so uh, some things I didn't touch on, like our, our coach's locker room is, uh, is going to be nearly doubled as well. Uh, the staff sizes that we have now versus in 2000 are so much more. So we've got uh, probably just downstairs in the football area, probably about 30% more people, um, coaches, staff, players on a daily basis than we did back in 2000. But when some of those changes that were made during COVID, like I mentioned, the um, practice squad basically doubling, those became permanent. And so we weren't sure that that was going to happen at the time. So uh, probably, you know, started looking at it in, in 21 and then 22 is when we decided. Uh, so Mr. Blank approved all of this back uh, October kind of time frame of last year. Last year, 
knew was happening, and that was just not not something they had had to kind of deal with it or be involved in at all. Um, I was pretty much already involved in it, just given you know the, the part of my role I had previously as well. So this is going to be in the probably 25 to $30 million range. Uh, we're still working through the budget as we're finalizing the design, but um, it'll be in that ballpark. Sure. Um, on, the, on the strength and, and conditioning, the big thing is, is space. Um, and so... Uh, we'll have a, a mezzanine in there that we're going to put all of our cardio equipment and so kind of get that up. Uh, it's also going to be a nice thing for our staff that will be able to use that without, you know, being in the way of, of, uh, of football and, and, and players. Um, and then we're also going to have a few other things just to make workouts and things more efficient. So we've got uh, a turf area inside for some sled work and things like that. So instead of having to transition outside, back inside, outside, back inside, the staff's going to be able to do things a lot more efficiently in the in the space, um, and then just aesthetically, it's going to be um, you know really cool with some big ro roll up doors, and you know probably nine months out of the year here, it's nice enough where we can keep those open and guys can come come in and out easily. So those are some of the key things. Yeah, yeah, Josh. Um, you know, I think I said at the, at the beginning, like this. This is uh, really a theme that we've been working on. So in in um, twenty twenty, probably some things that are less visible to you guys. We had some pretty big projects to redo our training room and a whole new wet area. Uh, we made some upgrades in our indoor facility at that time. Several million dollars that year. Uh, even during COVID, which was difficult to get some construction things done during that time. Um, and then the next year, we built the Emory Orthopedic and Spine Center next door, um, which is open to the public. But for us, it's really been a game changer on the football side. When our guys need imaging or um, need examination, we've sort of got a VIP back door that we can go in and, and get things done right there. Um, so Jake File and the staff love having that. Uh, we used to have to you know, drive guys up to Gainesville just to get a, a x-ray or MRI. So that was a big ch big change in 2021 that's helped our, our football team um, and the community. Um, and so um, this studio obviously was the next big thing we did in 22, and so now th this this project. So, um, so yeah, Sp Spencer and I already, you know, taking a look at some other things that we'll have to run up the flagpole and see, but – um, it's, it's uh, again, something we want to continue to get better every year, and the facilities are, are a big part of that, so I'm sure there will be more things in the future. Yeah. As, as, as you mentioned, you're right, Mike, that we were, we were already in the process of addressing these things. So the things that came up in the NFLPA report card from a facility standpoint, we agreed with because we were, as, as we said, we were already addressing those. So we knew that the dining area and the locker room and strength and conditioning areas were things that we wanted, wanted to improve. So, so we agreed with those. Um, Coach has had some some uh, players involved and and reviewed plans with them and got input from them, uh, but directly the scorecard itself wasn't an impetus for it. But obviously related and and we agreed with the areas that the players pointed out. Is there something that takes more of a selling point in terms of our selling point like this next door player that we're going to get? Um, I think it can be. You know that's that's not why we're doing it. We we visited. Uh, you know, some college facilities like UGA and Clemson, and, you know, it's, it's just crazy what, what those uh, programs are, are doing now from a facility standpoint, and they definitely have to do that, you know, to keep up. Uh, so it's a little bit different with us that without, you know, we don't have that same motivation and requirements. Um, but, but we know that, that, that players look and want to make sure that, that the owner and the team is taking care of the players and putting them first, and, and from that standpoint, we, we hope it's beneficial.
Yeah, the you know, there's I've heard some some questions and speculation on, like uh, on that from time to time. We, we've never, you know, entertained going anywhere else. And Flyer Branch is a city we have a great relationship with, and Hall County. Um, so this facility has worked great for us o over the years. And so, yeah, I would say you know we're investing, you know, tens of millions of dollars more more here, and so um, just solidifies you know, our commitment and partnership with the area here. Uh, it's been, it's been good. I, I'm starting to get to the point where I feel like I'm doing one job instead of two. So, you know, after doing one for a long time and transitioning out, it takes a little bit of time, but I um, feel like we're starting to hit our, hit our stride. It'll be different when we get to the, to the season, a whole nother uh, round of things, but it's, it's been a good transition. Sure. Um, yeah, we're we're excited. First of all, just about the overall global markets program that the that the NFL has, um, and just long term, Josh, international for us as a league is a huge growth opportunity. Uh, and so when we take a look at just the demand that's been there, we we've now as a league played over a hundred regular season games uh, overseas, which uh, first time I heard that number. Uh, shocked me a little bit, um, even though we've, we've been uh, obviously around and involved in, in many of those. But the demand, if you if you look at Germany, for example, last year the first game there, uh, Tampa Bay and Seattle, for a stadium that holds, I think it's 55,000, there were two million ticket requests for that for that one game. Um, so it's you know it's a market that has has a lot of demand, uh, but for us specifically, you know I would say there's a few things that that drove us to, to apply for Germany and choose it. Um, they already have a, uh, a pretty sound uh, flag football program there. There's about 30,000 participants already in Germany. Uh, and uh, flag football for us uh, is really just uh, a key initiative to help grow the game. Um, so we're obviously involved in it here in Georgia. Our team uh, helped to make it an official sport. Uh, here in, in high school girls flag football. Uh, we're hoping to have over 250 schools that uh, officially are in GHSA in girls flag football this year. Um, we're, we're doing some things tomorrow in, in Alabama to help kick off a flag football field there uh, and also in Montana. So uh, it's, it's a big thing in what we do. So the fact they already had a starting point there that's pretty solid, uh, we hope to keep growing that there. Um, and uh, Germany has the, the second most U.S. military bases, and you know that's another key initiative for our community outreach. Uh, and so uh, it's it's a natural extension of what we're already doing um, with our our support for the military. Um, that's an, in fact we'll, we'll have a coach and some other folks in in Germany next next week. Um, as the tail end of the USO tour, so it'll sort of our, be our first official event in Germany. And then lastly, um, we we have a lot of great partners that are very active already uh, in Germany. Obviously, Mercedes Benz, um, and and others that it's big hubs for them. So Delta, FedEx, um, are all major great partners with us, and and they they're doing big business in, in Germany. So all those factors together really what led us there. Okay, thank you guys.